Pokemon and Nintendo line up some sweet, sweet announcements. We explore the cracks in Nintendo's crown and Xbox players petition for Helldivers 2. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. With the Switch 2 believed to have been pushed begrudgingly into 2025, a whole load of Nintendo fans are wondering what the hell there is to look forward to. Luckily for them, Nintendo announced a partner showcase for tomorrow. It will be hitting your screens at these times worldwide and will hopefully fill this year's newly formed void with a bunch of third-party titles. I imagine we'll see our first Xbox game announcements, most likely Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment. Nintendo leaker Puro, who correctly predicted the partner showcase, has also also dropped some hints with a cryptic tweet about dolphins. Some speculate it could be a new Endless Ocean game or a new Echo the Dolphin. Or as the most famous GameCube emulator was called Dolphin, it could just mean a bunch of GameCube titles are set for Nintendo Switch Online. And if that's not all enough, the Pokemon Company has announced a digital event for next Tuesday too. It coincides with Pokemon Day 2024, which commemorates the launch of the first Pokemon games in Japan. And with all the DLC for Scarlet and Violet now out, who knows, we might get an announcement for whatever Pokemon project Game Freak is currently working on. Luckily for them, currently the bar on Pokemon games is incredibly low. What announcements do you reckon we'll see? Make sure to share your predictions below. And while you're here, make sure to hit subscribe too, as we'll have you covered once all that juicy info drops. Staying somewhat on topic, did you know that currently Nintendo is the richest company in Japan? That may be surprising because Japan has some heavy hitters, Toyota, Sony, Yamaha, and to be honest, Yamaha has always been a close favorite of mine because what company is known for two totally different products, pianos and motorbikes? What a combo, and God will they be unstoppable if they ever combine the two. Not apologizing for that picture. Well, it turns out I burst my own bubble in researching this story because they're two totally independent companies. They have been since the 50s, and there goes that dream. But I digress. Turns out when you deduct any debt from those companies, Nintendo emerges at the top, thanks to the help of literally having zero debt. Yep, they're just casually sitting on $11 billion. And it's all a big thanks to the Switch selling incredibly well and the Super Mario movie making an obscene amount of money. And it's quite funny once you compare that to Sony, the other big Japanese console maker, which according to one source is sitting at $31 billion of debt. They're gonna have to sell a whole load of tacky gold sneakers to make up for that one. Speaking of Nintendo though, I'm gonna give a hot take here because I don't know if Nintendo will retain that crown. And that's mainly due to a fundamental issue with the company. They're not at the forefront of technological innovation. And yes, the Switch's hybrid form factor was ingenious, but ultimately it was created using existing tech. And I'm not just talking about hardware. Games are changing and most notably, technology is advancing faster and faster and development is taking longer and longer. I would hate to advocate things like AI, but there's a reason everyone is investing so heavily in it right now because there are so many applications that could benefit game development. Whether that will be done effectively or ethically is another question. Spoiler, it won't. But just look at the Switch. It felt dated within just a few years, and I'm willing to hedge my bet that it will happen even faster with the Switch too. And that's where the cracks will start to show. Now, people will argue, it's chill. Nintendo have a great library of games. And you're right, there's basically no other company that consistently releases such high caliber games. Just think about mainline series like Mario and Zelda. Not only is every single one incredible, but they were all serious contenders for game of the year. But this strategy won't last forever. The time between those games is only getting longer. And what does Nintendo release to fill in those gaps? Remakes. And look, that's nice and all, there's a fundamental problem here. They're already running out of games. I mean, seriously, they are scraping the barrel. Just look at what's out this week. Mario vs Donkey Kong, a Game Boy Advance game from 2004. And let's not forget, these franchises can slip. Just look at Pokemon. Man, those games used to be the pinnacle of entertainment and just look how far they have fallen. And this is Pokemon, one of the most beloved franchises in the world. The mainline games are embarrassing, the online TCG is a shameful buggy mess, and if an IP as loved as Pokemon can be this mistreated, then I'm sorry, no one is safe. Now, I should clarify, I'm not saying this out of some vendetta for Nintendo, Quite obviously, I'm actually a massive fanboy. And luckily for Nintendo, they are sitting on huge amounts of cash and there's multiple approaches they could take. They could heavily invest in research and development of hardware, meaning their consoles are bespoke pieces of tech that have shelf life. 
They could buy up or found new game studios and invest in new IPs. But my fear is Nintendo is stuck in its ways. They're already decades behind when it comes to content creators and esports. What they have done so far has worked incredibly well, so it's always the easier option to just do more of the same. But in an environment changing at an unprecedented pace, Will that be enough? I'm curious what you think. By no means do I feel like Nintendo will die off, just that it might lose its crown over the next two or three decades. You might completely disagree. That's cool. Tell me why. Share those thoughts down in the comments. On to the quick fire round. And if you've been watching Jinx News over the last few weeks, you already know that Helldivers 2 is kind of a big deal. It's defied all expectations, beaten GTA 5's peak player count on Steam, and its devs have had to put a cap on concurrent players because basically everyone wants to play it. Well, it seems like Xbox owners are part of that group, as a petition has been made to bring it to Xbox Series X and S. The game's currently only available on PC and PS5, and even Phil Spencer has weighed in, saying that he's not sure who it helps in the industry by it not being on Xbox. Of course he would say that. The petition's original target was 35,000, but at the time of recording, the petition's got 45,884 signatures, with a new target of 50,000. By the time you're seeing this, it could have very well smashed that too. And it's not completely outside the realms of possibility, as PlayStation Studios have released games on Xbox in the form of the MLB The Show franchise, though that is by no means a common occurrence. From Change.org to Kickstarter now, and the developers behind the strategy game Stormgate are doing something a little unusual by asking for fans to invest in the studio itself. According to CEO Tim Morton, Frost Giant Studios' crowd equity offering on Start Engine will enable private investors and passionate players to actually be our business partners to help launch Stormgate in the best possible way together. Now, Frost Giant had originally asked for just $100,000 for Stormgate, and they've raised over $2 million, which ain't too shabby. The game will enter early access at some point this year, and by the sounds of it, there will be a fair few players who will want to give it a go. And who knows, a lot of them may even own a piece of Frost Giant themselves. On to another Kickstarter campaign, and this one's a little way down on everyone's list. And when I say little way down, I mean way, 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 way down, because, well, it's an adult orientated ripoff of Cyberpunk. The imaginatively titled Cyberpunk XXX basically looks like a CD Projekt Red game, but a lot less good and with a lot more boobs. At the time of recording, it has received a whopping £765 of its £15,000 goal. Though that might go up once people get a load of those jiggle physics. And no, I'm not mad about it this time because it's a porn game. Being over-sexualized is its whole purpose. And finally, as we approach Dungeons & Dragons' 50th anniversary, it looks like it's getting its very own Lego set in the form of a gelatinous cube. Back in 2022, they also ran a Lego Ideas competition, inviting fans to create their own sets. 620 people submitted their ideas, and some of them were pretty great, like The Monster Manual by Colonel Pure Cake, Xanathar the Beholder by Shadow Toa, and Tiamat's Dice Tower by Bowtie Trombone, which is a sick idea. But it was Dragon's Keep Journey's End by Bolt Builds that took the win, so I imagine that's on the way alongside the gelatinous cube. And let's be honest, these will probably sell very well, because not only do you get a sick Lego set, but those Lego figures double up as convenient little minis for your D&D campaign. Talk about a win-win. And that's the show! Sometimes farewells are incredibly painful, so I'll just make this short and sweet. Bye.